Welcome to this BioFMQ tutorial in which we will learn how to convert your data files into a file format suitable for further processing with BioFMQ. In previous tutorials you have learned how to download BioFMQ and how to open the GUI and load a directory. So we will start from there. There are a number of different file types that BioFMQ can use. For example, TIFF files that you can see here. This is the directory loaded in the last tutorials. But there is also a number of other file types that can be used. These are, for example, those that are generated by your image acquisition software on the microscope, like CZI files, ND2 files, or omitif stacks. In order to show you how to import this data, I have prepared a directory in which, as you can see, we have three files, one ND2 file and two CZI files. So I will now load this directory in BioFMQ. I will click on Browse. Select the directory and load. You can see that all three files appear in the file list here. You can also see that in the image preview, there is no longer an image, but instead information is being shown. In this case, you can see how many positions you have in your file, uh, what the dimensions of your images are and how many channels and time points you have. This information is being updated when you click on another file. So you can see, for example, in the ND2 file, we have seven positions, two channels, and 25 time points. Now, if you want to convert this data, you have to go over to this dialog here, where we have the button Import Files, as well as the option to generate one experiment folder per position during the import. And this means that, for example, in this case, when I have seven positions, there will be seven separate folders generated and the images are sorted into those folders. So I will click this here in order to generate separate folders. Now, if you want to not import all of the images at once, you can adapt the image range up here. The image range tells you which of the files in the file list are going to be processed. So in this case, I only want the second file, and since I have selected it by clicking on Selected Images, the file range is automatically adapted. So now I'm clicking on import files and you can see that the import is started. It will take a while because the file is rather large. However, you only have to do this step once and in the future we will use the imported data files as they are. You can track how the import progresses in the status bar up here as well as in the command history, where you can see the number of images that have been generated. Another way to do it is to go to the directory, where you can see that now an additional folder has been generated and the name of this folder is the same as the name of the file that we're exporting. In this folder, we have position folders and in the position folders, the converted data. You can see here that we have two different file types, we have TIFF files. These are the images that we're exporting. You can scroll through them with your mouse wheel. And we have metadata files. These are MATLAB files that BioFMQ needs, but you won't have to worry about them because BioFMQ generates and updates them by itself. Now you can see that the second position folder has already been generated. And once all position folders are generated, we can go back to the GUI and see what happens. So now we'll just wait for that. Now that all seven position folders have been generated, the import is nearly done and we go back to the GUI. Once the import is completed, this dialog pops up where you can see the different directories which were created in this case one folder per position and you're being asked if you'd rather switch to the first directory in the list in order to continue processing or stay in the current directory. Since we have two more files to import, we will stay. The directory is reloaded and we end up back here. So now we want to import the other two files. You can see that both of them only have one position 
So we'll uncheck this checkbox because we don't need additional folders. And we will select them both. And again, click on selected images to import them both at once. You can see here the image range has changed to one space three. And actually we could type that ourselves if you hadn't selected the images first. We again click on import files and wait for the import to finish. Again, we can switch directory or stay in the same one. In this case, we want to switch because our import is complete. And you can see that there is another pop-up that asks for the channel containing the primary cell signal. In our case, this would be the first channel. So now the new directory has been loaded. You can see the fluorescence channel has been set to 1. And you can see the image preview here. So everything has worked. In additional tutorials, we will now be guided through the different processing steps.